Hi, I'm James, and in today's video I'm taking a look at getting inside the HP MV 15-inch uh, X360 laptop. And what we're going to need is a decent little screwdriver set. Uh, this is for sort of normally for opening mobile phones and the likes, but it has everything we need here. And a plastic pry tool. And we are just going to go along the back here. And we just need to lift the corners, I believe. In fact, let's peel the whole strip out just to check. So no, we do need to remove the whole strip because we have four screws at the back here. Um, we are going to keep that because we want to reaffix it so we're not going to place it face down. So at the front here we need a Torx T5 head to remove the three screws here. This is a brand new machine, so we're going to be very careful with it, uh, especially as it belongs to my wife, and she will not be happy if I cause any damage to it. We're now going to go to a 2mm crosshead to go along the back here, and remove the four screws here. We'll just get that one when we uh, lift the base. So with that done, using, in this case I used a fairly wide pry tool, so we lift that front edge and then we should just be able to pull up on the base and that removes the back cover. Um, HP do have a service manual for this machine on their site so I would recommend taking a look at it if you have any sort of doubts as to what you're doing. Um, and once we're inside we can see here we have access to the main heat sink uh, access to the main heat sink we can if we choose to so we can see here it is a SATA SSD um, the socket here because it doesn't have a division here so while we have a SATA SSD here we can see we could put in an MVME SSD instead. So dead easy to take the SSD in and out. Processor lives under this part of the heatsink and the graphics card here. Now to remove the hard drive we have a little clip here and lifting that allows us to unplug the little ribbon cable. The drive then isn't I believe screwed down uh, it's just pressed in in this rubber into the plastic frame. Although we have a little resistance there, let's just check around it. No, it all looks okay. So let's lever up to get that out. So yeah, it's just the rubber holding the drive into that bay. It looks like there was just maybe some light adhesive. So if we were to replace the drive, we can see it comes with this one terabyte drive. The replacement just needs to be wrapped in this rubber and pressed back into there. Uh, it is a 9.5mm thick drive. 
Um, so there is the option to, uh, we could fit a second SSD in here or a different hard drive if we wanted to make changes or in the event of a failure. So I'm just going to press that back down into place. and allow me to just switch off while I correct this because I haven't got that back corner quite right. So with that pressed back down properly we can now slip that back in and the hard drive is reconnected. And memory lives under this cover here. Now we should just be able to very carefully lift that up. And what we can see here is we have four gigs of memory built onto the main board and four gigs in this dim socket. Now what that means is typically for best performance I would not change that. Um, I would leave it as the four gig module here and four gig on board. This means we'll get dual channel memory which is ideal for integrated graphics. If we start changing that for a uh, 8 or 16 gig module it may have a negative impact on performance in some applications. Um, I'm not sure if HP do a version of this with 8GB on the board, that would be something for me to take a look at. In terms of getting to the wireless card, that would be a lot more difficult. That is built under the board, uh, so you'd have to take the whole main board of the system out to get access to that, which is not something I'm going to be doing today. So we are going to slot that memory cover back into place. It just has these little clips around it which hold it down and then to get things reassembled we are just going to take the back cover and press it back in starting at the back Working along the sides and then the front. And with everything clipped back into place, that doesn't actually seem to have cured the slight issue I had there as well where the back panel was flexing very slightly which is great and with that done all that's left is to refit the screws and we should all be happy so if we'd fitted a new SSD or hard drive we'd be ready to get those all set up. I hope you found this video useful, thanks for watching and if you've got any questions just ask them in the comments below.